One million people have got their loans forgiven on PSLF. Eight million people are currently on save. Now, before the election, there was four different routes that I said that could happen. We now know what that route is. So with this certainty, we're going to dive in deeper to what that means for your student loans in 2025, especially when it comes to student loan forgiveness. If you're listening on the podcast, welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome there as well. With that being said, let's jump into it. First things first, today we're going to be talking about some general recommendations. Everybody's situation is different, so I highly recommend going out and getting expert financial help. Yes, I'm biased. I think every single one of you should go to Fitbooks, but if not, at least go somewhere to get expert financial help with all this stuff. With that said, what I'm going to touch on today are the biggest questions that we're getting from people since the election. First question we've been getting is for those of you that are on public service loan forgiveness. Is PSLF going to go away? The short answer to that is no. Why? Because from what I've been told from lawyers is that it would take Congress to get that taken away and abolished. In order to do that, they would most likely need 60 votes in the Senate, which means they would have to have Democrats also come on board to say, yeah, we're going to get rid of that. Side note, it's a little bit of irony because they would need Democrats to get rid of it. It was actually Republicans that put it into place. So it's weird how that whole dynamic works out over the last, what was it, you know, 15, 16 years since they put that into place. Uh, But nonetheless, if you're on PSLF, you know, we're pretty sure and pretty confident that you are safe. However, stay tuned because there's some pieces in this that you'd have to know about in terms of which plan you're on. Well, but I'm going to hold that for a, a few questions down the road. The next question we'd be getting is that I heard Donald Trump is going to get rid of the Department of Education. Again, lawyers have told me on this, same thing, he would need 60 votes in the Senate. Not going to happen. So I don't think the Department of Education is going anywhere. So the next question we've been getting is, will Donald Trump repeal SAVE? To me, this is not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when and how. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a possibility that he just says, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let the courts do it. Because as you may or may not know, SAVE is going through the court system right now. So the courts, hopefully by June of 2025, will turn around and say, this is illegal. It's gone. And if the courts do that, then there's also a chance that ICR and PAYE are also gone gone as well. Now, if Trump does it, then there's a there's a chance that ICR and Paisy Earn stay. However, there's that wild card that the courts were talking about a few weeks ago. That say even if they stay, that there is no forgiveness. There's like a, what's called a balloon term, meaning if you pay for 20 or 25 years on ICR pays you earn, then at the end of the 20th year you would own a balloon payment instead of having it forgiven. Again, that's a what if scenario. Hopefully we'll be knowing what's going on with that by June of 2025 at the latest. The next question we've been getting is. Do we think that President Trump will propose his own student loan repayment plan? So we got to go back to like 2017, 2018. President Trump actually did propose his own plan. Um, It went nowhere in Congress. But his plan was for 12.5% of your income for IBR. And the big change on it was this, was that for graduate students, it would be 30 years long. And for undergrad students, it would only be 15 years long. Now, that's a big if. Again, I don't know what type of plan he's going to talk about or if he even does a plan because in this year's uh, run up to the election, he didn't bring it up student loans at all. So we'll see if it comes out. Uh, Personally, what I believe is that he might just throw his hands up and say, let the course decide. Whatever they decide, that's what it is. We got other fish to fry and they go focus on that. Got another question about if I just got my loans forgiven, am I going to have to be put back into repayment? Meaning like I just got it forgiven on PSLF or whatever it may be. The answer is no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, primarily because it's a very small percentage of overall loan borrowers. So it's only like, I want to say like two or 3% of people that have gotten their loans forgiven underneath all these like small programs that president Biden did. They're so small that I don't think that, that the courts or President Trump are going to waste their time with it. They're going to look at the big picture, which is getting rid of save. And then, like I said, a few minutes ago, 
they got other things to to do. President Trump and his administration that are more top of mind than student loans. So I don't think that they spend the time going after those those uh, those individuals that got it forgiven already. So I think you're safe there. The big question, big 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 question we've been getting is, should I stay on save forbearance or not? At this point, if you're going for forgiveness, the answer is no. You should be actually going on to IBR. However, there are four distinct scenarios where you would I would say, yeah, go ahead and stay on the forbearance for right now. The first one is if you were on save and you hit the threshold for the number of months paid in order to get forgiveness and you're just waiting for the Department of Education to forgive it over the next month or two, then obviously you wouldn't want to switch. Just wait to see what happens and hopefully they work fast and get your loans forgiven. That's number one. Number two, if you have private student loans or if you have other high interest rate debt, so maybe you have like high credit card interest rate debt or a high car loan interest rate that you have, and you can use this time period where your save forbearance has 0% interest on it for the next few months. And instead of paying your student loans, you're paying those other debts off more quickly. So you're targeting those loans specifically. So that's the second scenario. The third scenario is if you were on save for the interest forgiveness, but you're actually aggressively paying off your student loans. Again, if that's your case and you want to aggressively pay them off, but you're in save forbearance, Again, you have 0% interest rates for the next few months. Do it again. It actually reminds me of like the COVID forbearance when there was no interest accruing. You can target all that money to the to the loan that you want to and pay them off quicker. That's the third scenario. And the fourth scenario is you really just can't afford it right now. In that case, you would want to wait until you're forced onto the IBR plan because the monthly payment is going to be a lot higher. However, in that case and all these cases, you should be setting up a game plan over the next few months to understand how your payments are going to change and how you're going to pay them because you don't want to be stuck, you know, five months from now, four months from now, and all of a sudden you get the bill and you're like, what am I going to do? So you want to make sure that you're setting up your game plan like now. Another question centered around, you know, does this change how I file if I'm married, how I file my taxes separately versus jointly? That question, no matter what, is always a big if. And your situation changes every year. So in that situation, that's something where it's like, you need to be definitely talking with a financial expert to be saying, hey, how do I file the taxes this year? Now, if you're gonna be forced to go on to IVR or old IVR, it's gonna be really important to start figuring that stuff out now because your payments are actually gonna be increasing. So it's like some people that we know that we're filing jointly, it might actually make sense if you file separately. So again, that's an ongoing thing. Make sure that you look into that every year anyways. All right, the next question is another big one too. If I'm on pay as you earn, P-A-Y-E already, should I be switching to IBR? No. Right now, what you wanna do is stay on pay as you earn and you're gonna to wanna to wait to see what happens with this whole court process. Again, we should have the answer by 2025. Um, again, you wanna stay tuned to our updates, other updates out there that come out. Again, on Bias towards our up updates. But again, stay on pay as you earn if you're already there until we know what's going to happen with it over the next six to seven months. What about the PSLF buyback? Should I should I bank on that? Should I hope that that's going to be there? Um, if you are getting your loans forgiven, if you're on PSLF right now and you've used PSLF buyback and you're expecting it to be forgiven in the next month or two, all is good. If, if it's past that, like when you're going to get your loans forgiven, I wouldn't even... Think that it's going to be there anymore. I, I can pretty much guarantee you that PSLF buyback is not going to be there at least for the next four years. We'll see what happens after that, but I would bank on that absolutely not being there uh, going forward. Now, one thing that I, I can tell you that I anticipate happening over the next four years, and I, I want to put this out there because I, I want to make sure that you guys aren't scared and freaking out, is that you're going to see people in Congress put together bills to get rid of things like PSLF and maybe even like really harsh repayment plans or whatever it may be. You're gonna see bills and you're gonna see the mainstream media take those bills and put really scary headlines on them. Most of them will go nowhere because like I said, like with PSLF, it's gonna require 60 votes in the Senate to get rid of it. That, so you're going to see these big, scary headlines because they're playing a political game, right? And they want you to click on them and all that type of stuff. When you see the headlines, don't panic. Make sure that you have a good news source and that you turn around and say, hey, look, what is real and what should I be concerned about? 
uh, what should I not do? And of course, like I said at the very beginning, the most important thing is to take this information and make sure that you are looking at it in context with your overall financial management plan. So like if you're having to go from save to IVR, what do you need to change? If you're going from filing jointly to separately, what do you need to change? How does it factor into buying homes, cars, family planning, all these different things? With that being said, I recommend watching this next.